Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Good morning, good e- good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I don't know when you're fucking hearing this. I was trying to fucking say that weirdly different. Let's see what episode this would be. I'm about to look at this. Let's see what episode of this show we're on. Because I honestly do not know. Do not know what episode we're on. But let me go over here. We're on episode 18. Episode 18 of the Past Time Podcast. I got my hair cut. I let one of the guys in the fraternity cut my hair. This is like the first time I'm seeing it on camera. It doesn't look too bad. Not too shabby. But today's episode, we're going to pretty much talk about sports gambling. Because that's what I'm doing lately. I'm not, I don't have a job. And I needed income. So, how do we make money when you don't know? Well, I'm a guy who hosts a college sports talk show or podcast. So, let's take a bit. I mean, I am down $300. You know, that's always fucking nice. But who are we going to take tonight? I'm saying tonight, first off, I don't know if the people on the great fucking sports betting worlds are going to be saying this shit. But I have been saying that the... One second, let me try this thing. Let me try getting white. White. As bright as I can. Ah, does not matter. Does not matter. Oh, I don't know if I had the mic. I was just fucking doing shit. If you're watching on camera, you saw. I was just trying to see if I could make it whiter in here. It's probably pretty bright. Let's see if it's pretty bright for you motherfuckers. Yeah, you guys can see me. Y'all can see me. All right, we're going to talk about sports, man. But why did I say the fucking Giants are going to beat the Eagles tonight? I want to see if sports chat, chat plays takes the Giants. All right, but no, my reason behind this is Eli Manning's coming in with Vegas. He's probably in his last season as a Giant, you know, and he wants to win this game. This might be the last time he ever plays his rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles. So, he got vengeance. He's got that look in his eye. And I don't think he's going to have a lot of touchdowns. I'm not taking Tom to take him for fantasy because fuck no. Fuck no. They're not going to fucking. They're going to give the ball to Saquon Barkley. And I'm telling you, Giants will win and the Giants will cover. Okay? My goal, my idea is look. Eli Manning will be the starting quarterback. Both teams are on a losing streak. Giants have lost eight in a row. Eagles have lost three in a row. Let's face it, the Eagles just lost the Dolphins. So in a way, the Eagles gave up 37 points in offense. That was ranked 29th point scores. This is a must win, but I also think Manning has something to prove right here. So I'm saying, best way is just take this as a money line. I'm taking Giants. Giants win this fucking game. Do you want to put in your parlay? I might put it in one of my parlays. I might run a couple parlays tonight. But I will do this as a money line. I will do this as a $10 money line. You know, something along those lines. But let's talk. So I'd call tonight a huge, huge NHL night. NHL for the night is the best. So let me pull up. I got a couple of places that I go and look for bets. You know what I mean? Uh, right here. So, NHL, I love doing NHL fucking, ooh, parlay of the day. 20 bucks brings you, holy shit, this is the, all right, Columbus Blue Jacks at the Washington Capitals, over six as the, over six goals in the game total, and the Boston Bruins, 1.5 puck line, so... That's plus 337. You put $20 down, you win 87.4. Or you put down fucking $10, you win $43 and something change. Holy shit, that's a lot of money. I'm going to fucking put this one in our fucking group chat. Oh, this is a fucking good one. So I got a group chat with a couple guys. So we're just talking. Uh, Iowa uh, covers the spread in the first half, plus 105. It's not bad. I got Pacers losing to the Clippers. Clippers cover the spread on that one. Not a bad fucking play. 
Now I'll send this one in. This is a good fucking bet. You know, you just send this in, you got friends to it. I also like fucking... Look, we got another one. A couple picks. So, Tampa Bay Lightning on the puck line. Washington Capitals on the puck line. Right there. Two underdogs. You throw both of those on a parlay. You could win fucking 30 bucks off of that $10 parlay. Over here, Bruins. Bruins puck line. And... Avalanche. Uh, my girlfriend's from Colorado. I've been taking the Avs a lot this season. I love the Avs. But we're going to talk N- NBA. NBA is some of the best. I fucking love the NBA. Oh, my God. Another fucking great one. Milwaukee Bucks cover the spread against the Orlando Magics. I see that happening. Under 217 points for the Memphis Grizzlies and Golden State Warriors. And under 227 points, Orlando Magic versus the Washington Wizards. That's a two-day parlay, but that's that's big money. I feel like that all could fucking hit right there. That's easily. This is a nice one right here. I got to fucking take those picks. You know what I mean? You got to make money where you want it. We got tonight. Today is Monday. So, you know, Clippers versus Pacers. I've said this. Pacers aren't going to win this. I'd take the Clippers. Okay, look. Kawhi is going to be in this game, I think. Let me see this. Clippers are they're coming off the loss of the box, but that's easily. The star players got smoked. And I don't think Simonis. I don't think Simonis will make a difference. They're choosing fucking the Clipper, uh the Pacers in this. I would take the Clippers in this. I, I would take uh you know what? Clippers money line if you're doing a straight bet. If you want to do a parlay, do parlay Indiana plays a great parlay right there. Pacers plus two and you know what? That's fucking. That's a really good one. Ah, uh, Celtics versus Cavs. That's easy. Celtics are win that. I think it's one point, and the game's obviously under on that one. It's what two twenty six and a half. Easy money. Raptors versus Bulls. Raptors cover the spread, and the game's under two fifteen. Yeah, Raptors are kind of a slower paced team. There is a lot of games tonight. Kings Rockets. Ooh, Kings plus twelve. So if they win, they got to win by 12. If they lose, they got to lose by 12. That's easy. That'll happen. I don't see fucking, you know, I don't see them fucking winning by. If they win, it's got to be a blowout for some fucking reason. Or if they lose, they're going to get a blowout. The game's going to go over 227.5 because they're both three-point shoes. Luke Walton loves shooting the three-point. That's because he came from fucking Steve Curry lineage and Mike D'Antoni, baby. But we're over here, Atlanta Magic. And the Bucks under 219. I do see that Magic and Bucks do play slower. Uh, Bucks literally don't let anyone score in the paint and just force you to shoot all fucking three balls. Magic. Markel Fultz loves attacking the paint. So that's going to be a slow game. Suns Timberwolves. These are my babies. I got the T Wolves covering the spread. So they're back to back. They do want to win. Wiggins my, was good to go against the Lakers. And Carl Anthony Towns played. So I think the fucking Timberwolves, I wouldn't do money land. I'd do the spread on this one. But the game's going to go over 233.5. Wiggins is back. So is Carl Anthony Towns. Wiggins was day to day, but he did play. We got the Thunder versus the Jazz. Jazz take them on the spread or just take them on the money line. Game over 212. I do see that happening. Grizzlies versus Golden State. Grizzlies are going to win this. I don't think the fucking Golden State is going to win. Like, you know what? Never mind. D'Angelo Russell is back. D'Angelo Russell is back. Draymond Green is not. So, with that being said, with Draymond Green being back and D'Angelo Russell being back from injury, I got a goal to say covering the spread on this one, but the game's going to be a low-scoring one because they can't put their fucking shots off. Yes. Is there any NCAA? I don't like betting on NCAA basketball that much, but, you know, it's all right. It's all right. Mainly, those were the NBA and NHL for tonight. Again, I told you two parlays to fucking take, which was... 
under 227.5 game total for the Magic and Wizards. Milwaukee Bucks, 11.5 point spread. And the under 217.5 Grizz. I mean, there was other ones that I told you you could have took throughout this, but I'm not going to fucking repeat those. And the other one was the Caps, Blue Jacks, over six points on the game total, and Bruins win the puck line. 20 bucks for 87 bucks. Pretty good fucking shit right there. Ten minutes into this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that's... Where's the sports you put down? Pretty fucking good. I don't know. I don't even know. But we gotta talk about fucking Juice World's death. Juice World's death. I have been saying this. Juice World's death. So I've been trying to talk about this. Juice World just died yesterday, December 6th. So I'm gonna talk about why he fucking died. I'm gonna call this out. I'm gonna report it. So originally they reported that it was fucking seizures. That... Juice World like had seizures, but and he when he, they got to him, he had blood running out of his mouth, and when they got to the hospital, they said, "Guy, he was brought there because of a reported cardiac arrest." So putting this all together, they said he consumed pills, and when they landed, federal, pe- they were waiting for them to get there because they knew they had contraband. So they were searching for contraband, and that's when all the seizures and shit happened. So they're saying right now that it's probably what happened is he had a massive heart attack from the consumption of pills. But they did find a codeine bottle and other prescription drugs and 70 pounds of marijuana on the flight. Let's bring this all together. When you're in high altitude like that, your blood does thin. And when you take a bunch of Percocets, painkillers, you know, Xanax and shit like that as a person who, myself, I've done all of those things. I don't do it anymore. It never was addicted. It's just, you know, grow people I hung out. I'm from, I was from Baltimore back now at KU. And just, you know, just stupid shit I did back in the day, but you mix them with alcohol makes you, you need just like a 40. Don't need that much. And coding itself does have alcohol. So if you're mixing all that shit, your liver is going to go to shit. It's going to go shit a lot quicker than just being an alcoholic. And everyone's different, so, you know, go to shit a lot quicker than others. So my theory, if he didn't just die from a heart attack from the consumption of large amount of pills, maybe he knew the feds were waiting for him there, and he was like, oh, shit, we got to take all these pills, and he just fucking, whoop, from all the consumptions of pills. And I'm not into all this connecting songs and shit like that. That's just fucking music. What I think happened is he probably took some, you know, Percocets or Vicodin, you know, Tylenol, any type of painkiller. Or maybe he just took Xanax. Go take Xanax. Because one thing that when your liver starts to go to shit, you do develop seizures, epilepsy. I know a friend who has liver damage and he has epilepsy now uh, from Xanax. And same thing when you try to get Xanax. One of the withdrawals that does kill you. So I don't think he was withdrawn through, through anything because he has the money to buy the pills and I don't think he would go through the pain of withdrawing like that. My theory is he took some pain painkillers, maybe drank some codeine, or maybe took some Xanax and drank some codeine because codeine itself is a painkiller but it has alcohol in it. And maybe drank some fucking alcohol in there. And his liver was already damaged, it was already hurting, and just that with the altitude uh, and the long flight, and it's a few hours. It was a long flight from Australia to Chicago. Probably culmination. Just fucking killed him. So you got your blood being thinner because you are in high altitude. You're taking Xanax, so you're already feeling kind of uh, hazed and dazed. And then you're bringing in painkillers and alcohol and you already probably have a liver damage so my theory with that is his liver is going to shit and by the time he arrived he just had a heart a massive heart attack because his liver his body was shutting down his organs were shutting down his liver wasn't working and he was so fucked up you couldn't really feel it you know what i mean you're on that many things and boom he just dropped that it was a culmination of extended drug use that just killed it i don't think at that point, I also think when you're at, you could argue that, yes, Lil Peep and Mac Miller took drugs with fentanyl in them, 
and maybe it'll come out that he did take drugs fentanyl. I live next to a guy next door who I used to buy cocaine from who used to shoot up fentanyl, and he's still walking around. So my thing is I think people know where they get their drugs and everything, and that's how it is. So I think his liver went to shit, or it was a health condition. Something health. There is more to this because he had blood running out of his mouth. He convulsed. He had convulsions, seizures, he had a heart attack. I just think it all goes into your liver going to shit and stuff like that. That's just my fucking theory, uh, my two cents on that. Because you have to think about it. I've seen all these TikTok videos, I've seen all these things, but the autopsy is scheduled for Monday. We won't find this out probably till fucking Tuesday on what actually happened, which I'll probably make another video for this because it'd be fucking sick. But yeah, that's my thought on it. I just want to hear your guys' opinion on it. Please leave them down below. If you're really interested, hit that like button, subscribe. Check out other episodes of this podcast. So, guys, puppies out.